I try to live the life that I want to live, yet not forget where I've come from, yet know what I want to go to. So the drive I have is relentless. The humbleness comes from where I, I started off, blue collar from Wales. The passion I have is what I wake up to every single morning. I'm not a content person. I achieve my goals and I rise the bar. I achieve that next goal and I rise the bar even further. I came to this country only one person. And I don't want to sound like, you know, like I'm looking for a sob story, or, but I know what the fuck I done to get to where I am now. And I didn't break any of my morals. I stayed humble. The people I met, the people who I met way back then, are still in my corner to this day because I never forget anybody. He wants to set a mark that's, you know, hard to beat, hard to catch up to. I mean, and this be what I think 13th show in a row. Um, if he wins, so he's one in a row. So I think he wants to he wants to leave a legacy for sure. He wants to leave a mark that maybe someone might catch it one day, but it's going to be really hard. So that way, you know, it's it's. There's, when he leaves a name, he's going to leave a name, and, and I think as a build on that, I think he also wants to be able to walk away from it. You know that, yes, he walks away as one of the best bodybuilders of all time, but it doesn't define who he is as a person. It's part of who he is, it's part of his history, but it's not who he is ultimately as a person. I think, you know, if you ask him, he's going to want to be probably known as one of the best husbands and fathers and businessmen. Not necessarily, hey, bodybuilding is, again, part of the history of Flex Lewis, but not a defining, the thing that ultimately defines him. So I first met Flex in 2004. Um, I met him at the USA's in Vegas. Um, I was a big fan of Dorian Yates. Uh, that's kind of who I emulated for training, which kind of plays into the role of Flex that I have now. But um, Flex Magazine had written a short little article on Flex because he had trained with Dorian at Temple Gym. And, you know, so anyone kind of affiliated with Dorian always caught my attention. And so I, you know, remember this little article when I was walking through the lobby of the USA's and Flex was in front of me at the time. And he was 19, you know, just kind of a kid. And he was sponsored by uh, Chemical Nutrition, who Dorian was sponsored by. So here you had Dorian's face on the back of Flex's shirt with all of Flex's accolades. So... I tapped him on the shoulder and just introduced myself. I caught him off guard, so he probably thought I was like a weirdo at the time. And uh, that was it. That was the encounter that we had. And then flash forward to 2007, a mutual friend of ours, Kevin Horton, uh, we were traveling or at FIBO and he introduced us. And, you know, Flex, I just reminded Flex, I said, I actually had met you before. And he remembered that because he remembered why, why did someone recognize me at that point. And so from that point on, we'd always just, We'd see each other in passing, um, traveling from show to show. You know, I was always bust his balls, trying to get him to come over to BSN when I was still there, and then ultimately did. But yeah, I mean, that's just how our friendship started was a kind of a random chance encounter, and then just seeing each other over the years at different trade shows. I don't necessarily feel like I have to keep up with them because um, obviously I'm smart enough to hey, listen, if I feel like I'm going to get injured, something's pulling, I'll back off. But you know. I'm I'm a fucking stubborn bastard and I'm you know I don't like to back down from anything so it's a challenge so I try to keep up with them as much as I can if there's a place I can push them I try um, but it's all in like pushing each other to be better it's not a ego thing it's not com like a competition it's just more of like hey listen if you can do it I can do it and it's just it's that back and forth hey if I got 50 reps you gotta get 50 reps um so it's just more, I think, of, a, of an accountability thing. Um, not necessarily like feeling I have to do everything the same, but if he's gonna put in that level of effort, I have to put in that level of effort because how can we push each other to be better if you know, we're not in the same level that way from a, I guess, a drive standpoint? I preach about dreaming big only because it's, a, it's not a saying or a hashtag that I throw at the end of a post is I dreamt big. I dreamt big and I came here. I dreamt big and I went for things. And I dreamt big and now I've achieved things that, again, I used to look at on TV. I used to look at through magazines. 
I used to look at through the eyes of other people and I wanted. I never was envious, I'm never jealous. The people who are really either gone content in life or they just don't have that willpower, that heart to go for it themselves. So they tell themselves, look at that person, why has that person got that? You can get that. There's no reason why you couldn't go for something in your life. As long as you make them goals, them steps, you will get one, one foot closer. One foot turns to two feet closer. And now I have a beautiful wife, I have a beautiful daughter, I have a house, cars, I have a gym, I have trophies, and again I'm surrounded with the people who are there for flex. And James, in all his successes, even if I lost them today, they're there for the right reasons. And that's why I tell people, it's like, dream big, go for your goals, surround yourself with the people that will push you closer to yours, and then you'll soon realize that, you know, once your momentum happens, you are one, one step closer to getting whatever you want, and you can achieve anything.